This is a photoelectric smoke alarm. It protects us from fires by warning us about them, and it allows us to more quickly respond to them. Today we're going to be tearing this down. Let's get started. Alright, so there are a couple of things which are interesting on this. If you look, then on this bottom plate, then it will go and uh, push this into place. So normally it's like this. When you activate it, it's like that. And uh, what I found is that that disconnects the battery. Um, and then you've got the standard hush button, and then this light uh, goes on, uh, this LED uh, turns on uh, once every 10 seconds, uh, just really briefly. Um, so we'll find out uh, when we open that up what it, uh, what those mean and how it works. Okay, and it's open, nice. Doesn't have any snaps. They don't want you to service this. And when they hid some of the screws behind stickers, actually three out of the four of them are behind the sticker. You can still read the writing, but uh, they just don't want you opening it up. All right, so real quick, so we've got battery here. We've got siren here. It looks like we've got emitter and um, IR emitter and IR receiver, some kind of an optical emitter receiver set up right here. Um, we've got that LED. Um, we've got the hush button. That's a really minuscule SMD component, and we've got a chip. We've got an inductor here, um, and then here's a switch which is underneath right here to activate the alarm. Um, Let's go and open it up. So first I'm going to uh, pull the plug on the power so that it doesn't go off in my face. Because um, it's extremely loud. You guys don't know because I when I turn down the sound when I when I set it off. But you guys know how loud uh, how loud how loud a smoke alarm nor normally is. Okay. So this is the top, this is the bottom. So if you look close, let me make sure you guys are focused there. Um, you've got a really um, large uh, plastic mesh. It's really thin. Um, and then let's try popping this off. Okay, there we have it. Okay, so it looks like this is set up so the air can pass through, but no light whatsoever can get, get into here. Uh, which is really important with an emitter receiver because it's extremely sensitive to uh, the receiver is set to be extremely sensitive to uh, particles of smoke. Um, the way that it works is basically you uh, you have light coming in. I don't know if I've got my direction right, um, but you've got uh, IR light coming in, and then uh, this is the direction which the receiver is pointing. And then basically what the light what the smoke particles do is it goes and uh, bounces that IR light to the receiver. Uh, so those that's the basic principle of how photoelectric smoke alarms work. Um, so let's go and look up that chip on there. Um, and we'll go and find out its specs and uh, find out its features and stuff. Okay, now I've got the first uh, three pages of the data sheet. Um, the part number was RE46C190, and I'll leave a link to the data sheet in the description. So the basic description of the chip is a CMOS low-power photoelectric smoke detector, ASIC, with interconnect and timer mode. Um, and the uh, features list, it, has, it says 2A uh, AA battery operation. Let's see, what's the rating on this lithium-ion one? It's going this out. It is a 3 volt one. Uh, if you guys want to know, it's a uh, FDK is the brand CR173355 uh, uh, E-N. So it's just 3 volts. Okay, let's keep going on. Uh, internal power reset. Loquincent uh, lo sent. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, quincent, uh, current c consumption, basically low par uh, current consumption uh, when it's just going and checking. Um, local alarm memory, interconnect, interconnect up to 40 det detectors on this model. It doesn't have an interconnect. Um, but as it says on the status sheet, you can interconnect them. Um, 
nine minute timer for sensitivity control. What that probably is, is the hush button, um, where you hit the button, it probably in enacts that nine minute timer, um, which uh, through that goes and uh, basically lowers the sensitivity. So probably if you had like really dense smoke or uh, really dense particles, um, it would still go off um, in hush modes, but I'm sure it would have to be really high. You guys keep on going down the list. Uh, uh, temp temporal or continuous horn pattern. Um, in low in internal low battery and chamber test. Uh, all internal oscillator, uh, internal infrared emitter, uh, infrared emitter diode driver. Um, adjustability, uh, adjustable hush sensitivity and 2% low battery set point. Um, okay. In description, a couple of things that stood out were um, a eternal oscillator strobes power to a strobe detection circuit every 10 seconds. So that's how they achieve the really low um, current usage, which allows us to operate, I think, for 10 years. All right, so it's every 10 seconds to keep the stand standby current to a minimum. If smoke is sensed, the detection rate is increased to verify an alarmed condition. A high uh, gain mode is available for push button chamber testing. So basically, uh, the hus hush button, instead of having two separate hush button and a test button, then if you go on, if it's going off, then you just tap the uh, single button and it hushes it. But if you hold it, um, when it's uh, off, no, if it's going on and you just tap, tap the hush button, then it goes and hushes it. Um, but if you hold it when it's off, then it will go and basically make it really, really sensitive. And that way you can go and uh, test it to make sure everything's functional. That's a pretty smart way to do it. Or right, a check for uh, low battery condition is performed every 86 seconds. Chamber integrity is tested uh, once every... Uh, 43 seconds went on standby. Uh, the temporal horn pattern supports the uh, NFPA 72 uh, emergency evacuation signal. I had no idea that there was something that was specifically for that. And then an internal nine minute timer can be used for reduced sensitivity mode. So that's it on the description. Uh, there are some nice block diagrams here on how they work. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is relatively universal um, on most uh, smoke alarms. So I'd expect for this block di diagram to uh, be a good um, example of uh, many photoelectric smoke alarms. And then we've got one for the ex uh, circuit on the outside. So if you look on the board, uh, let me focus. Um, then there are very few components. Um, you've got the switch, you've got some uh, SMD capacitors, uh, this is the largest one, uh, some resistors. I'm only seeing one transi uh, SMD transistor. Um, but it's really, it's a really small circuit outside of it. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you've got any ideas or suggestions, then uh, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll read through all of them. Uh, if you like this uh, video, then you may also like this one right here. And if you want to get no uh, hear about my new newest videos, uh, you can click the uh, subscribe button right there. Uh, if you want to actually get notified about my new videos, make sure you click the bell icon and click the button to get notified. Thanks for watching Homeschool's Workbench, and I'll see you next time.